welcome to Grace Lutheran Church, and I'm Pastor Bonnie Grimaldi. I'm so glad to see you all here this morning. We welcome Dr. David Johns as our new member. Would you stay, like to stand? Um, he is a new member. Yeah. And he has rejoined Grace, and we look forward to connecting and reconnecting with you. Um, Oktoberfest is October 15th following the 1030 service in Fellowship Hall. Please sign up for your dessert donations in the narthex. And today is Blanket Sunday, if you haven't guessed, our beautiful quilts here and in the narthex. Um, will the, are there any Grace Women of the ELCA here at the service? Um, they were all at the first service? Okay. Um, but I do have a blessing for the quilt. Gracious God, you have given us so many good gifts. Help us to share these gifts with others. Bless the makers and the givers of these quilts as an expression of our love for neighbors near and far. Bless the quilts that we have provided that they may provide warmth, comfort, and consolation to all who receive them, and bless all who give and all who receive with your steadfast love and tender care, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. And they are going uh, to the Lutheran World Relief, and this and many others. These aren't the only ones. They, they, there are many, and there are kits here for personal care kits that are going too. We continue to pray for Ukraine that Russia's aggression will end soon and that there will be peace and healing for all. As we go to our prelude, let us turn our hearts and minds towards worship.
Thank you. Please stand as you are able for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sins. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed, revealed the ways the way of justice, justice. Yet, yet we, we fail to follow you. you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown. Forgive us for the unjust demands we place on others and your creation. Forgive us for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor. Forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us and guide us in the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. may be seated for our lessons. Good morning. Good morning. On this 18th Sunday after Pentecost, our first reading is Ezekiel, beginning with chapter 18, beginning with the first verse. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge? As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine. The life of the parent, as well as the life of the child, is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the tra transgressions that they had committed. They shall surely live, they shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, all of you according to your ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me 
and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsive reading is Psalm 25, located in your bulletin insert. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord, therefore you you lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. Our second reading is Philippians chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to the 21st chapter of Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing the things, these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? 
A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated for our children's sermon. Do we have any children who want to come forward today? Hi. Hi, Erin. Yes. Olivia and Ava. Okay. Here comes Clay. Okay. I'm going to scoot in right here. Good morning, children. Good morning. So, to, in today's scripture, Jesus is telling us about a big word called authority. Okay, let's write that down. Authority. A U T H O R I T Y. So, what is authority? Hmm. Well, Authority is given to us by Jesus, and it's how we live our life, how we share God's love with each other and with others. It's what we say and what we do, okay? So let's write say on this side and do on this side. And, okay, let's see if everybody can see me, okay? Authority and what we say and what we do to share God's love. Okay, I was thinking about that. What do I say to share God's love? What do I say? And I was thinking of something I say a lot, and that is that God is with us always. That's something I say to share God's love. So I'm going to say God is with us always. Can you think of anything that you say that you share God's love? Yes, Erin. Like we like God. Yes. Okay. Yes, Clay? God's love is always with you. I need to write faster. Okay. And so if we want, if we say these things, how do we show them? With, how do we do them? That's a little bit different, isn't it? Well, if I say that God is with us always, um, I can listen to people, right? I can listen to people who might be lonely, right? Because if people aren't, don't know that God is with us always, they might be lonely, right? So I had a friend whose mom is very far away, and she was worried about her. And so I listened to her tell me her stories about how she's worried about her mom, and she feels bad about not being able to see her. And then I gave her a hug, and I encouraged her, and I told her, you are loving and caring for your mom, even though she is far away. Okay, so I can write, listen, under do. Do you have anything that you want to say you can do with God's love is always with you and we like God, we love God? What can we do to show that? Because we say and what we do, it's how we have authority. Christ shares our, his authority. Yes, Clay. Encourage. Very good. 
and courage. Very good. Okay, so we can say these things that we find in the scriptures, and we can do these things, listening and encouraging also that we find in the scriptures, right? So we're sharing God's love, and that's our authority. Okay? Let us pray. Dear God, help us to say and do what you want us to to share your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very good. So I've got some snacks. You can take, take one, take a couple, pass them down. Okay. Okay. Okay, to your grandma, and to your brother. Okay, thank. You. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, there is children's church today. Yeah. Okay. Please pray with me. Dear God, help us to see and know the authority you have shared with us, and then to live that. Live that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Authority issues. Have you ever known anyone with authority issues? Authority is the theme running through today's gospel. The chief priests and elders take issue with Jesus' authority. The two sons challenge their father's authority. They are not the only ones with authority issues. And yes, I'm talking about you, and I'm talking about myself. We all have authority issues. But I'm not talking about authority issues in the way that we usually understand them. In our usual understanding of authority issues, the obvious question in today's gospel is whether we recognize and submit to the authority of Jesus and the Father. That question, however, is so obvious that I have to wonder if it's really not the question at the heart of today's gospel. It's so obvious that I think there has to be something more going on to jump on that question as the obvious and the only question to be answered only reveals our misunderstanding of what true authority is. More often than not, we are confused about authority. We misunderstand it to be based on credentials and expertise, a thick resume, years of education, successes and accomplishments, reputation and status, or the position held in relationship to another. We assume that authority comes from outside of a person and that it's given to them by their circumstances. In this understanding, some have authority and others don't. Who do you think you are? What gives you the right to tell me what to do? or to use a phrase from my childhood, you are not the boss of me. <laughs> that represents our usual way of understanding authority issues. We don't like someone else teaching us, correcting us, or telling us what to do. We hear that in the challenge of the chief priests and the elders to Jesus. By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? We see it in the refusal of the two sons to go to the vineyard. There is, however, another authority issue at play in today's gospel. That issue is our failure and sometimes our refusal to recognize 
claim and exercise the authority within us to go to the vineyard. That's the authority issue I believe this gospel is holding before us today. So let me push you a little bit on this authority issue. If you think God is the boss of you, you've misunderstood authority. Let go of that idea. God isn't the boss of you. God isn't the boss of me. God isn't the boss of us. God is our author. Every day, God authorizes us to enter and sends us into his vineyard to act in this world with his authority and on his behalf through the gifts that he has bestowed upon each of us. True authority always comes from within. It's an interior God-given quality, not an exterior circumstance. That is what the chief priests and the elders failed to understand. I think that's why Jesus was always so aggravated with the religious leaders. They chose to exchange their God-given authority for human power. Sometimes we do too. That's what's happening in much of our world today. In the absence of true authority, there will always be power struggles. Look at the gridlock in our political system. Look at the wars throughout the world. Look at the conflicts in your own relationships. Look at the wars throughout the world. Those are about power, not authority. Our leaders exercise power, but very few exercise authority. In the exercise of power, we look to our own interests. But in the exercise of authority, we look to the interests of others. Think about the people who hold authority for you. They're not concerned about themselves. They don't dominate or control you. They inspire you. They call forth from you faith, hope, and trust. They expand your world open new possibilities, and bring forth life and gifts in yourself that you never knew were there. They cause you to reevaluate your life, change your mind, and live differently. That sounds an awful lot like Jesus, and it is very different from those who exercise power. I'll always remember and give thanks for the authority of my father, the Reverend Gene Sackett. Aside from my mom and sister, I thought I was the most important person in his life. At his funeral, I realized everyone there thought the same thing about themselves. That was not manipulation on dad's part. It was his authority. His silence, listening, presence, and wisdom were not just his personality traits. They were the divine attributes in his life, gifts that God bestowed upon him that created space and place for me and for others. It invited us to discover our own authority that showed us the way to the vineyard of our lives. There are people in this church who have no leadership position, title, or theological credentials. And yet, they have such great authority. I see it in their compassion and gentleness. I hear it in the way they pray. I feel it in the, their love for me and others. They too show me the way to the vineyard of my life. That is what authorities do. 
but it's not about them. It doesn't come from them. All authority originates in God, but it's not exclusive to God. God shares his authority with us. The authority that God shares with us is nothing less than his own divine attributes. It's the expression and manifestation of God's life in and through our own. That shared authority exists in us and is, is revealed by us as the many and the varied charisms, the gifts God has imparted on each of our lives. That means every one of us has authority. As your pastor, I don't have more authority than you. I don't have better authority than you. I just have a different authority. God gives each of us gifts and authority unique to our lives. God is generous, extravagant with the gifts that he gives and the authority he shares. We all have God-given gifts and authority. There's no one without authority. The difference is not that some have authority and others do not. The difference is that some recognize and exercise their authority and others don't. Regardless, God knows and sees the authority he has given us and waits for us to see and know it too. And when we do, we change our mind and go to the vineyard Dan was an hour and a half into his new teaching career when he saw him at the other end of the hallway. He was the reason he almost didn't take the job. Before long, he became the reason he stayed. Though he had never met Jason Banning before, he knew his situation. He was a 13-year-old special needs seventh grade boy who had been confined to a wheelchair virtually all of his life. As Izzard County, Arkansas Consolidated School's newest special education teacher, Dan was hired to teach Jason and attend to his personal needs. He had medicines that needed to be administered and diapers that needed to be changed twice a day. Odd task for a man who had made a habit of fleeing his own kids at medicine and diaper changing time. So Dan stood at his end of the hall, watching Jason being pushed toward him by his friend Delbert. He whispered a quiet prayer. God, please help me with this. He expected an angry child, resentful of the life that he had been dealt. As Dan watched him, he had to admit that Jason had every right to be angry. He had spina bifida, a congenital defect of the vertebrae. He had already undergone a dozen surgeries, and his family anticipated more. He was being cared for full time by elderly grandparents. His prognosis was poor. Dan remembers seeing Jason at the school's sixth grade graduation. His grandmother had invited the entire family and had ordered balloons and flowers for the event. She wanted the celebration to be special for Jason because, as she later explained, it might be the only graduation he would ever see. Yet if Jason was bitter, He saw no sign of it that day. Wheeling up to him in the school hallway, Jason realized who Dan was. Holding out both arms in greeting, he said, welcome, friend. It's good to see you. One time during Dan's first year, when Jason's 80-year-old grandfather was ill, Jason asked him to pray with him. 
Dan was reluctant. Yeah. Tactfully, he explained that our government had regulations about teachers and students praying together on school grounds. Jason seemed to understand. Two hours later, though, when Jason was in band class, God spoke to Dan, not in an audible voice, but through a feeling of deep remorse that weighed heavily on his heart. It's a sad world indeed when a public school teacher is so wrapped up in the system that he's afraid to pray with a frightened child, he thought. Dan dropped what he was doing and found his friend among the tubas and the clarinets. Dan wheeled him back to the nurse's station, and there, in the quiet of the room, Jason and Dan prayed for his grandfather. He recovered soon after. Many times after that, Jason and Dan prayed together. He told Jason he often prayed silently in his classroom. And Jason suggested a way that two of them could pray silently together. He would lay his pencils, he always had at least two, on his desk in the form of a cross as a signal to Dan that he was praying. From wherever Dan was in the room, he would join him. As the school years went by, Dan realized how he had been changing inside. At first, he had thought of Jason as a student, and then a friend, and now he was much more than a friend. Jason was like a son to him. So let me push you a little bit more on your authority issues, okay? What's the authority that God has given you? What gifts, what divine attributes has God bestowed upon you? Are you living from that authority and sharing those gifts? Have you gone to the vineyard? Or are you simply mouthing the answers you think God wants to hear? Amen. Let us stand for this as you are able. Continue. <laughs>
Can you tell I like that song? <laughs> I do. I can't sit still with that song. Let us profess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Remembering the caring and generous work of God, we pray for the church creation and the needs of our neighbors. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church, give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gifts of wisdom and discernment. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that in impact the environment. Summon us to be advocates for healthy waterways, habitants, and air. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lead us in justice as we pray for those in government, the military, and other positions of authority local, state, and national. Give them humble and willing hearts, looking to the needs of others. We pray also for our enemies. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Trusting your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and people who are sick or suffering in any way, for those that we have listed on our prayer list and those known only to you. Give them encouragement and consolation in their presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Teach us your paths as we pray for this congregation. Be at work in, in us and unite us in love as we labor together for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints who died secure in the knowledge of salvation. Keep us fearless in our faith and certain of your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Remembering us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share with one another a sign of Christ's peace in any way you're comfortable. You may be seated. Thank you. 
glad. I'm, <laughs> I could do cheers too, but that was wonderful. Thank you. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy, almighty and merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, but not as we ought but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and the blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
body of Christ given for you. The 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 body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Jesus Christ, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out 
and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks be 